Hello everyone. Uh, let's look at some uh, structures that can be confusing um, regarding the mid-sagittal section of um, the brain and the brain stem. Um, a simple-minded person like myself would try to find a structure that you can never miss, even if you haven't slept in 72 hours, which is uh, usually what happens um, before a test. So what is a structure that you can never miss that can give you orientation of what's posterior and what's anterior? And I would look right here at this tree, which doesn't really look like a tree in this plastic model, but in an actual picture of the cadaver brain, it will look like a really nice branching tree. This is the cerebellum uh, cut in half. Um, and that probably would orient you the best, uh, that this side is posterior and this side is anterior. Uh, from the um, cerebellum, if you want to recognize the next structure, I would think that the best one that you can never miss is this belly here, which is the pons. And if you recognize the pons, first the cerebellum, then the pons, then what's in between them Pons is all this section here. What's between them is the fourth ventricle, this structure. Even on a plastic model, you can't miss this. This cavity here is the fourth ventricle. We recognize this as the belly that we call the pons. What's above it, what's immediately above it is the midbrain. What's immediately below it is the um, medulla oblongata. Then from the midbrain, you can recognize a couple of structures. You can recognize this tunnel going through the, uh, the midbrain. Remember, this is a section, so this groove is actually a canal. This is the aqueduct of Sylvius. The aqueduct of Sylvius, or the, uh, the cerebral um, aqueduct. An aqueduct is a canal. A canal is, is communicating two cavities. So what does this canal communicate. Be, uh, it communicates between the fourth ventricle and the third ventricle. Okay, where is the third ventricle? Can you see any cavities up here? You can't see it anymore because you sectioned the brain. So where, where was it uh, present, that third ventricle? It's actually present right here, where my uh, pencil is hovering between this structure and its sister structure on the other side, the hemisphere that was removed. So what is this structure? This is the thalamus. And between the, the left thalamus and the right thalamus lies the cavity of the third ventricle. From the third ventricle, the CSF runs down the aqueduct to the fourth ventricle. Where does it go from here? It goes to the central canal of the spinal cord, and most of it will be drained through the um, foramina of uh, Lushka and Magendi, which you don't see in this, um, in this model. So again, cerebellum, pons, midbrain, medulla. Above the midbrain, you have the thalamus, which is right here. Okay, and between the two thalami, you have the third ventricle. The crown above the thalamus, the hair of that horse, okay, this is the head of the horse, okay, this is the snout of that horse, looks like oh, a seahorse, right? This whole structure looks like a seahorse. So this is the head, and this is the hair, basically. If it had a hair, it would be this structure. What is this structure? This is the fornix, fornix. And the fornix will lead you backward to this um, circle here and anteriorly to this circle here. So what are these? These are communicating fibers between the right and the left hemispheres. We call them commissures. So this is the posterior commissure and this is the anterior commissure. You didn't have to find it right away. If you go through the sequence, you'll never miss it, okay? 
cerebellum, pons, midbrain and medulla, fourth ventricle leads to the third ventricle where my pencil is hovering. The third ventricle is bounded by the thalamus and the other thalamus. On top of the other of this thalamus, you have the fornix, which is part of the limbic system, and then the anterior commissure, posterior commissure. So the snout of the horse, or the seahorse, the snout is basically the hypothalamus, okay? So if this was a real brain, the hypothalamus will have a, a little stem coming down, like a little stick coming down uh, through a diaphragm in the, um, in the dura, leading to the hypophyseal fossa uh, that is right here in the sphenoid bone, if, if the bone was here. Uh, and within that uh, hypophyseal fossa, you have the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland should be here. Okay, but you don't see it in this section. Okay, so you have the thalamus, you have the fornix. What is the structure? Okay, this here is not really a structure. This is, or a solid structure. This is basically a diaphragm or a membrane or a septum. Number 44 on this um, plastic model is the septum pellucidum. And a septum means it's separating two hollow structures. And that hollow structure that you don't see here, if you see the opposite a hemisphere, it will be a cavity, okay? Uh, because the septum came, out, came off supposedly on this half, so the other half doesn't have that wall, so you see the cavity. What is that cavity? That's the lateral ventricle, which I'll show you in a minute on the other hemisphere, okay? So bear with me, you have the thalamus, fornix, you have the septum pellucidum closing off the lateral ventricles. What's above the lateral ventricle right here? This is the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum are, uh, is basically a bridge between the right and the left hemispheres. This is a white matter bridge between the right and the left hemisphere. And above that, you have a very important uh, gyrus, which is the cingulate gyrus, a very important component of the limbic system. So this section here is difficult because you try to identify structures in, in, a, in, a, in a, um, uh, an alphabet soup, okay? You don't do that. You have to have a system. So start from the tree here. And remember, the tree is in the backyard. So the tree is always ba backwards. It's always posterior, okay? C uh, cerebellum, pons, between them the fourth ventricle. Above the pons is the midbrain. Below the, the pons is the medulla. Then above the midbrain is the head of the horse, the seahorse, okay? And that's the thalamus. Between the two thalamus, you have the third ventricle. The hair of the horse is basically the fornix. If you follow the fornix anteriorly, you have the anterior commissure. If you follow the hair posteriorly, you find the posterior commissure. Those are commissural fibers, which means they connect both sides. Uh, and then above and anterior to the fornix, you have the septum pellucidum that hides behind it a cavity in the brain that is the third ventricle. Above the third ventricle, you have the corpus callosum. Okay? And just an, an added bonus because we don't go through the cere uh, cerebrum itself um, uh, in this in this video, but just add to it the cingulate gy gyrus right here. Okay, let's move on to the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so this is the same thing, the same model, but on the opposite side. See how it can be confusing if you look at a mirror image. This is nothing new. It's exactly the same, just a mirror image. It's the opposite. Where is the cerebellum? Where is the tree? It's always in the backyard. So the back is here. This is anterior. This is posterior. You have thalamus, pons, fourth ventricle. Above the pons is the midbrain. Below the, be, below the pons is the medulla. Fourth ventricle is connected through the cerebral aqueduct that goes through the midbrain to a cavity that used to be here. It's not there anymore because the two thalami have been separated. So you have the thalamus here. The snout of the, the horse is the hypothalamus. The pituitary would be dangling over here. Actually, 
this here is the supposed to be the pituitary gland but it, it won't show exactly like this um, for the limitation of dissection usually it's disconnected you should only see the infundibulum which is the stem connecting the hypothalamus to the pituitary okay so thalamus what's next to the thalamus what do you recognize next the fornix okay and then anterior commissure posterior commissure what used to be a septum on the opposite side here okay is not present on this side because the septum came off on the opposite side so now you see the cavity that is the lateral ventricle the lateral ventricle you have a lateral ventricle on this side you have the lateral ventricle on the left side and it's separated by the septum pellucidum so once you take make a section the septum comes off with one of the two halves um, just remember that the uh, foramen of Monroe would be between the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle, so it would be on probably, if this was an actual specimen, I'll be able to stick my uh, pin or pencil through it to get into the lateral ventricle. So the lateral ventricle is where the CSF is made, and it flows to the third ventricle. Some CSF is made as the, in the third ventricle as well, and then it flows down through the um, cerebral aqueduct. By the way, these are the um, uh, uh, the colliculi, the superior and inferior colliculi on this side, and will be the uh, the superior and inferior colliculi of the midbrain on the opposite side. And then it goes to the uh, the CSF goes down to the cerebral aqueduct to the fourth ventricle to the central canal of the spinal cord down here, but most of it will be drained to the um, uh, subarachnoid space through the foramen of Lushka and Magendi. You don't see it here. Okay. Uh, let me get a little bit more fancy and take this piece off. This here is the cavity of the third ventricles, but what is this structure? These are parts of, uh, of the basal ganglia, basically. These are components of the basal ganglia. So what are we looking at here? Uh, you have, I when it comes to the ba basal ganglia, I want you to locate the structure that divides them, which is this structure. Okay. First, can you see that the corpus callosum are bridging, trying to bridge from left to right? So if you, if I put it like this, it will be bridging the right and left sides. But anyway, we'll talk about the corpus callosum in a separate video. Um, the structure that I want to focus on here is the structure that divides the basal ganglia. You have to orient yourself, otherwise you'll mix the structures up. This structure is the internal capsule. These are fibers that travels up and down. Those are uh, projection fibers that connect the midbrain to the cerebrum and medial to them is the um, uh, the uh, uh, caudate nucleus okay so this here is the caudate nucleus lateral to it you will have the lentiform nucleus or the lenticular nucleus. The lenticular nucle nucleus is actually two nuclei. In fact, one of the two nuclei has two sub uh, components. Um, uh, so let's just focus on the lenticular nucleus for now. It's always lateral to the internal capsule. It's always lateral to the internal capsule. So the lentic the L is lateral. Okay, and um, uh, the medial component, which let, let me take this off like this. So this would be the thalamus right here. Okay, I hope you can see it. And this would be the caudate nucleus. And this here will be the lentiform or lenticular nucleus. And we can um, dedicate a separate lecture or a separate video to the um, basal ganglia because I need to get as a cut section to show you the different components. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.